us current affairs show. Today I have with us Dr. Ratan Chandra. Namaste, Dr. Namaste. Namaste, Namaste, Shira. Namaste. Dr. Chandra, let's begin by talking about the Karnataka elections because that's the hot topic of the hour. What exactly has happened? What has gone wrong for the BJP, and what has gone right for the Congress? Well, I've written an article today, which is basically uh, responding to. Uh, rather than you know uh, giving some lessons to bjp that they should ponder over that governance is to be seen to be delivered rather than just you know being talked about i think that was missing secondly the disconnect of the uh, state leadership and the local leadership with the workers and the ground level people was apparent corruption was an issue which was which was never denied and it was there i know for it so all this together when it happens naturally there is to go into some problem secondly the lackluster campaigning in the initial stage till modi ji hit the ground so there is total lack of purpose there is total lack total lack of uh, you know coordination and refusal to see what is going wrong or what has to be turned around because bjp is known for their very good campaigning and very planned approach that was missing in the initial stages and there was a there was a negativity which they had to fight they did not on the congress side they picked up uh this issue of you know mobilizing the so called minority or muslim votes in a way that would create a polarization for which uh, they put that particular issue of bajrang dal ban it was picked up by bjp that went into their favor so it was a very tricky situation and the the new idea of freebies which started with aap before that started by tamil nadu and the load that is which is basically 21% of the budget of karnataka which can prove it disastrous and this is if everybody copies it it can actually lead to complete downfall of the indian economy itself for if this this didn't work because uh, himachal hasn't yet delivered aap has not yet delivered rajasthan has not yet delivered so to make promises which will not be delivered will come uh, people will realize very late but right now yes that worked in their favor and bjp seem to be reacting so to my mind that these are the main points which i can talk about their communication was much better i would say congress communication was much better than bjp this time it's very graceful for uh, you know of you to be giving them that point but uh, when you talk about freebies don't you think that uh, educated masses of karnataka should have been able to see through that about the effect of freebies on the indian economy see karnataka is very large so to look at that from the point of your bangalore or to from mysore etc doesn't actually serve well there is huge population which lives in villages which lives in tribal areas north karnataka is especially not much developed uh, despite years of independence and uh, only bjp had given some uh, some focus with new medical colleges with new railway stations new railway lines but somehow it seems not to have worked because i said what you deliver has also to be shared with the people that communication was missing so what was delivered was not shared and what was not delivered was highlighted or rather the kind kind of corruption charges there was highlighted and bjp was very flat footed about it. and how would they understand the your impact of the this freebies on the budget after all aap escape with this ideas aap punjab they could manage the same idea rajasthan and uh, himachal fell for the same idea so people will respond after five years not immediately and i would suspect that the first year even if congress goes about it they know they are answerable so that will answer will be taken later on so this danger of uh, uh, this politics will increase i see this will the template in coming uh, through four or five elections that are coming this year and that i think is a very uh, unhappy sign for me by this bjp or aap because modi ji fought this idea very strongly even in his gujarat days but somehow this populism is taking toll and we are falling going back to the old uh, you know uh, very 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 old left uh, socialist slogan and if there is no money what is what do you what do you distribute you dispute poverty finally venezuela is an ideal example which had more money than we have today and we have to be very careful about it but i think uh, the bug has bitten so i don't know when it will stop so uh, talking about muslim vote consolidation what will the effect of this uh, phenomenon be in the ga elections in the upcoming 2024 elections see 2024 is very different because these elections are fought on local issues uh, the state elections and state election as i said bjp had much to answer for on the national level uh, bjp has nothing to fear because bjp has given in answers in last 9 years which can never be denied by its worst critics they can keep on shouting so modi just delivered and if you look at the uh, modi ji's vote share during last 2019 was 51% in 
Karnataka itself. And we found 2018 also, Congress had won four elections before the general election, but finally Modi ji won in 2019 with much better vote share. So the issues at the local and the national level are very different. Modi ji fought a valiant battle in Karnataka. I think in this presence, BJP has at least saved 10 more seats because that is Bangalore and North Karnada, which not have come to them. So his contribution was there, but local, see, you can have a success of so-called double engine when the other engine is also seen as working. Somehow that impression didn't work in Karnataka. So that was that. And now coming to 2019, the one is that Modi's popularity still there is no opposition leader. Secondly, opposition cannot unite. Uh, Rahul Gandhi's success or rather Congress success this year, which was due to the local very strong leadership. Maybe credit can, they will take the credit for Rahul Gandhi. That's fine. Their politics, no issues. Now Rahul Gandhi or Congress becoming stronger can become a roadblock in case of entire opposition unity because they worked on the premises that Congress will be weak. Congress will lose, uh, you know, they can turn around Congress and, you know, push it around. Now, Congress basically is an arrogant party. It has never treated others very, very uh, uh, with humility. That is the reason on opposition unity, you have problem with Congress. Now, having tasted some success in Karnataka, they will demand more. While the opposition leaders who have their own ego, whether it's TRS or Mamta, uh, they will not uh, be very happy to accommodate her. Then look at her comp- their competition. They are all competing in the same space, whether it's Telangana or Bengal or Bihar. Bihar, they are hardly present anyway. But in the areas where there is election, uh, they are the main competitors. In that case, what will they do when the general election comes? What will they do? So these the regional parties won't be happy to take them around. Congress will want bigger pie. And that is where the problem will be because Congress looks good today. But when it comes to the next election, 2024, it will not have that kind of, uh, you know, kind of uh, image that they see on a particular. Because in state level, these are local leaders who have done well. And Karnataka typically, BJP did not present a very good local leader. That very clear. By getting Yadurpa out and not putting another very good face who looked like a, who had a fighting chance or who could produce very good, uh, you know, work for BJP, that didn't happen. So unimpressive local leaders, then BJP leaders centrally per can't pick up. And knowing this, only blame I can put on central leadership. But they, despite knowing this, they did not take timely action. Uh, one question that comes out of this is that uh, do you think that uh, the central BJP leadership, are they becoming complacent? I would say complacent. There are too many things on hand. Every three, four months there is an election. They have to run governments also. So I would say not say complacent, but there is there are something I missed, no doubt. What was it only they can respond? Why they did not see through this uh, very poor performance? Why they chose a wrong leader at that time, who from beginning looked very uninspiring? For, for, I mean, excuse me for my word, but because I have gone to Karnataka, I have seen those people working there. And at the level, as I said, communication gap between those leaders at every level and the common worker on the street was huge. Anapine was known. Despite that, these workers worked very, very hard. But that particular damage was there. And Congress, as I said, much better organized this time, took advantage. And nationally, it cannot happen. As I said, they are in the competing sphere. They have huge egos. They don't have common policy. And Modi ji scores well over this continuous delivery for last nine years. I don't want to recount. You know about it. Many speakers may have spoken in your own. Uh, you know, program. So I won't get into that, but it's very well known. It's highly recognized. So there is nothing, there is no competition there as a seat. Correct. And uh, moving on, uh, uh, Dr. But see, one lesson that about... BJP will learn this time, which uh, it didn't take till Karnataka, that they have to listen to the ground workers, they have to take the feedback, and they have to change course in terms of listening and, you know, tweaking their policies. They have done every time. And I think they will also do this time. But that is one thing that is very necessary when they go to 2024. Yet, despite, like, uh, it is always, it, it is seen and it is also spoken about that how much uh, groundwork the BGP has done in terms of reaching out to the uh, the common masses. But when you look at South India, BJP has never really had a strong presence there. Do you think that the North-South divide is playing some kind of role? See, over Karnataka, here? BJP has not dropped in vote yet. Though we didn't talk about it, it's very clear that vote share is not dropped. So naturally, his base is intact. It is not growing. That is the problem. So where to grow that BJP has to find out. If they work with what Modi ji does at the national level, they have grown very well because when 51% vote for Modi ji, from 36 to 51%, that's 17% people, why can't local BJP capture? 
and Karnataka has been BJP's happy hunting ground for long years. It's not something different. They are also now making big splash in Tamil Nadu. They started taking steps there. In Karnataka, we know there's total polarized uh, atmosphere where they have to put their foot in. Once they get the put, uh, foot in and people realize that their candidate can win, they will get more votes. Now, for example, even uh, church and the Christian people are getting tired of their Christian politicians who are claiming to be the representative. They are so scared of the love jihad issue and they are scared of the very aggressive Islamist nature of uh, Kerala politics. They are also coming to BJP. If this combination works and the local people realize they can win, once that confidence comes that there is break-in is possible, BJP will grow there also. Tamil Nadu and Tamil, Telangana, Andhra Pradesh has a history. That history is that BJP was very pro uh, smaller states from beginning. There they had to follow TDP line. It caused them very heavily. Now to rebuild those parties, you need strong commitment of the local leaders and uh, to who will carry the people forward. And that will take a little time to recover. So I don't think South is, this South has different political, you know, grammar. And as local BJP leaders rise, uh, rise like it has done in case of Tamil Nadu now and Karnataka, they're already there for many years. So they, they will grow. And as I said, Telangana, Andhra, yes, there is a vacuum. Because of this compromise due to TDP, which went against their own ideas, and they suffered for that. Now, how fast the local leadership picks up will come in the next election. We'll come to realize when Telangana elections go. Okay, rather come in the next time. Kerala, I'm very sure, very, very intense work of BJP cadre and RSS people there and very deep pockets right up to village level. But I said, hump has to be crossed. At the hump will be crossed they, when they get right kind of social uh, you know, tie-ups and people if he believe that they can win, then th that change will come at that time. Like in the past few years, BJP has worked very hard to, uh, you know, to shun its image, that hardline image of uh, Hindu Nationalist Party. It has uh, accommodated all masses, like under Sabka Saad, Sabka Vikas. Has it really paid off in the South? Is the South actually buying this? See, there's not question of uh, Hindutva, uh, you know, softening of Hindutva, etc. Karnataka was never soft Hindutva. It was all over very, and there is nothing like soft and hard Hindutva anyway. It is question of Karnataka, what happened that BJP leaders talked a lot about Hindutva, but it was never very positive and constructive approach. For example, if they talked about uh, handing out temple to Hindus, that would be very positive sign to the Hindus. They didn't say that. And they work for the, um, uh, for the minorities. At the same time, they shunned the majority interests, which are not so difficult to answer to. So this kind of politics is, will not work in South. And South, this uh, Tamil Nadu is a very different ball game. As I said, a Dravidian life uh, kind of politics and highly oppressive and conflicted and, uh, you know, politics that's going on. This will take time, but as the new kind of uh, politics being done by BJP, they are on the breakthrough. And I think by the next five to 10 years, BJP will grow very well in Tamil Nadu. Similarly, in Telangana, see, it's a cater-based party, ideology-based party. It doesn't mind losing an election because keep, people keep on working. It's not like family-owned parties where you lose two elections and you have no money to, uh, to pocket or not to work on. So the, for them, defeat is very difficult. For them to grow is very difficult. Here, generations are gone for the work. It has continuously grown. The RSS has, uh, you know, sacrificed hundreds of people for their cause of Hindu, Hindu consolidation, Hindu unity, Hindu reforms, and uh, they have not uh, shied away from any kind of, uh, you know, struggle they have to face or the oppression they face. So it is not one party, one family party or, you know, very few people working. So that goes in their favor. In the, in the life of a nation, these are very, you know, this is a very small period of time that we are talking about. And yes, uh, like RSS works in southern part of Bharat in a way that people understand that BJP has to learn that art. That art of, for example, in Bengal, you talk of, you, unless you talk of Durga, you cannot talk of Ram. Now, this basic idea has to be understood. Similarly, when you talk of uh, Karnataka, their issues with Hindu are different. Like, temple is a big issue for South. You know, temple ownership, etc. Because major losers from this temple, uh, temple control are the Hindus. But somehow, BJP has not picked up that uh, issue. I believe it's high time they picked up that issue. It's a positive agenda. It hurts nobody. It's an agenda for this community where crores of rupees, lakhs of land has been usurped by the government, misused by the government and Hindu temples, Hindu, uh, you know, partial etc. losing for that. It's a positive agenda. It's not against anybody. 
I do not know when BJP will take it up. I think they talk about it. They have to take it up because South, that is a big issue for the community. It indeed is. And it's even becoming an issue in Uttarakhand. Yeah. Uh, moving on, uh, Dr. Sharda, we have uh, recently seen Hindu migrants who have come from uh, Pakistan in Jodhpur, you would have heard that their uh, shanties, including their water tank, it was uh, bulldozed over by the Ashok uh, Gelot government. Uh, where exactly are we on the CA and its implementation? See, CAA actually is uh, post, uh, you know, pre-2014. It should be continuous. It has not happened so far. It has not been converted to law. But even without that, how does any government destroy those people, people's home and doesn't give them any space for their growth is something that we must question. In the garb of secularism, do you throw away those, uh, those, uh, those refugees or orphans of partition? They were orphans of partition after all. It was not their mistake. If in Kashmir, uh, Jammu Kashmir, you had a million people sitting there for 70 years, they became million during that period. They had no education rights. They had no employment rights. They had no human rights. And we just, our government, still BJP came just sat over it. It's a huge tragedy. Similarly, in Rajasthan, in Bengal, in various places, Northeast, these refugees, uh, the way they are suffering, it is mind, it is very, very, you know, hurtful. And I think any government should be ashamed of this treatment to those refugees because there is no reason why it should be private enterprise. Why not government enterprise? The Rohingyas have come all the way from uh, uh, Myanmar to, uh, to Assam to Bangladesh and gone right up to Jammu. And they are settled then near the uh, military areas also. How? So they have their own way of taking them along. They have their own funding system. They can settle them. No government uh, disturbs them. But here any government can disturb them. Just because they don't have voting rights. There is no excuse at all. And those people are working, they're working there. But for the state government to behave this abominable manner, there is no excuse at all. C or no CA. Because when CA has a certain cutoff line, anyway, what happens to people who come later? It's a living tragedy of human beings, of Hindus, Buddhists, and all the minorities, even Christians who are coming there. And we are just talking about CA, CA, we don't even put laws in place. And th thirdly, the state governments aren't even bothered about these people. That is that is huge tragedy that people must ask questions to these governments. They transfer the particular collector. That doesn't solve the uh, heartlessness of the whole issue. And under the, to think of it under the Nehru Liaquat Pact, the Indian state, the Indian uh, national government, it has an obligation. Yes. To, yes. It has an obligation yes. to take care of these people who are yes. coming in from these yes. uh, states. In fact, CA is a formalization of that particular act only, no? So uh, why do Absolutely. people protest? I do not know. Why laws are not being made? I do not know. Why this becomes a communal issue? I do not know because none of the interests of the local Muslims are heard at all. Not one clause when you ask anybody what is wrong with CA, not one clause we pointed out. They just say, we feel so. Are they worried more about yeah. Muslims on the other side who went to Pakistan their own will? Are we going to be responsible for them also? No. We will first be responsible for people who are dying, who are disappearing who have been converted, raped, and who have no voice there. So those persecuted people, when they come here, they have to be settled first. Those who opted for Pakistan, who lived in Pakistan for years, for them, it's price chip. If the, if the Muslim leaders here they believe that Paki, the people who went to Pakistan or Muslims who went to Pakistan is also a responsibility, then first admit that it was a mistake that this partition was wrong and we were lobbied up wrongly. And if the, he says so, then there's no right for Pakistan. So let Pakistan be dissolved. Let it work it work in the way that Indian government works. Are they ready for that? They're not even ready for that. So you cannot have your cake and eat it too. You create a Pakistan where they are suffering. Now some a brother goes out, creates a bloody partition. You give him a certain part of property. Then he says, I am not in, uh, happy in this property. Please give me your room also. It doesn't work that way. He has to do prayashit. He has to do prayashit. He has to uh, seek apologies. And he has to say, we will not follow that path. We will live in peace under certain constraint, only then we can come. And then, of course, we have larger, uh, larger land. Even Bangladesh has not given us land. So when you create a land for those people, you go there, you made a mistake, then why should we pay for it? While Hindus there had our duty. Minorities had our duty. We had duty to themselves. And those people suffered, whether they suffered in Jammu Kashmir, when those people went to the Jammu area, or those people who, uh, who sat there hoping that Liyakat Pact will act. 
if Liakat and Nehru Peck didn't work, are we responsible for that? We are not. We should resolve that problem. And they are poor. They are poor SC, ST people. They, some of them are rich, but they have left everything in Sindh because they live under constant fear. Why there is no interest in human crime? I am very, I am very sorry to say that our government right from beginning have not made this international issue, human rights issue. Why I do not know. It is an international human rights issue. We have every right to raise it. They can keep on talking about fake uh, Kashmir narrative. Why, why can't we talk about the tragedy of this refugees from Afghanistan or from uh, Pakistan and Bangladesh? Despite their uh, large scale persecution in these yes, countries. Yes, exactly. Speaking about atrocities on uh, minority communities in these neighboring countries, we now want to talk about atrocities on majority uh, majorities uh, population in West Bengal. What do you have to say about that? What can I say about it? I can only say that uh, Bengal is becoming the Bengal is competing for being East, uh, you know, uh, East Bangladesh. I'm very sorry to use the word. I can say West Bengal is trying to. It's going, going to be worse than what Bangladesh is today in terms of rights for the minorities. Or, or the, there they are minority, here they are not minority in uh, statistical terms. But in the huge number of districts where they are minority, what kind of rights do they have? And when government believes that they can keep on working for these so-called minorities who are nearly 35% or 30% of the population and with majority of the, all the majority, uh, border area being Muslim majority, what is this government doing? And when Mamta says that, uh, dear friends, we, when you do the, your uh, your Roza, why can't that is silence these people? Or so many other, uh, you know, so many other dialogues she said, Dudharu gai dud de uski laad bhi khani padti hai. So milking cow can even hit you, you have to take that hit also. So this level of prostrating before jihadi elements is a danger that Bengal is living in. And there is no, no easy relief because as per our own constitution, we have to suffer because state government cannot be dismissed, should not be dismissed. But if this is the kind of law and order situation, every time high court has to get into picture. So this change will come. Last time it was about to come, then last minute oppression just went across Bengal. And I think till the people of those, they have that kind of, uh, you know, unity, that they will respond to such uh, goon uh, attacks, they will suffer some more time. But if Marxists could be thrown out by equally violent uh, TMC, I'm afraid tomorrow that also might happen, that you will have violence. And this is because of the oppressive measures against the Hindus. And see, the Hindus who are suffering are all low, low, uh, you know, low income groups, very deprived people. The so-called Bhadralog is sitting in cities very happily. They claim to be secular. But the majority of poor people who are living in villages, with all the sobs that uh, Mamta may be giving, but the kind of oppression they are living in, the fear of police, fear of TMC goons, that has to somehow been challenged. And I hope that uh, like last time when BJP was very strong on the ground and somehow during the violence of the polls, it did not take the right steps to see to it that the workers don't suffer so much. They will, they will have to take new look how to fight it. It's a local level uh, workers are still hopeful. They are still, the morale is high, but they should feel that there is somebody standing behind them will take their care, will be very, they will confront the state government if required. This confrontation on the state government has to be done because they are sitting very happily believing that with a consolidated vote by vote bank of uh, these people, they can just keep on steamrolling the Hindus. And the tyranny in West Bengal actually seems never ending because uh, not only has the state that is through the chief minister said that you cannot enter certain areas. If you do enter uh, the Muslim areas, the Ram Nabi processions, then you had it. NCPCR chief was taken to police station and uh, mistreated. He said I was beaten up. NCPCR is a constitutional post. He came to check the veracity of persecution of Muslim uh, of Hindu children or minor, uh, you know, minors, and he was not allowed to do the do his job. Fact finding commission of the state government was not allowed to do their job. So this is the kind of violent party that is not fit to be. Uh, you called itself a democratic party. Absolutely. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sharda, for joining us and giving very uh, rounded and independent neutral views on the situation prevailing right Thanks, now. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. 
please remember to subscribe to us and switch on the notifications for this channel. For our other social media links, more content and to support our work, please visit citti.net. Dhanyavad. Namaskar.